I'm a 22-year-old female that weighs 80 pounds and that's athletic. I'm quite tall and have a defect in my eyes, so one's gray and one's green. I promise that'll be relevant later. So this happened when I was 20 and it stopped when I was 21. Many things have happened to me for some reason. I guess I'm just a magnet for weirdness. I met this guy in university when he was finishing and I was just starting. He was assigned my study partner. I'm studying to be a pediatrician. I remember that he was quite nice in the beginning but started to get jealous whenever I spent time with my boyfriend. This was the first red flag that whenever I went I always kind of saw him walking some meters behind me. And then the notes started. There were really sexual notes about me and other things I'm not so sure I should share. After that, I didn't know who it was, but at the end, it was about 255 notes all in one month. The last one actually had names, so I went straight to the office and reported him. I ended up with a different partner. The day that I had to tell them that I had gotten a different partner... I was kind of about to lose it and sweating bullets. The face he made was a pure anger. He started to yell racial slurs at me. I'm a quarter Latin and German. About how I was a Nazi, that I was a psycho, and he went on and on. And now a tip for people like me, just walk away. And that's what I did. The only thing I cared about at that time was that he would not find where my apartment was or he would not threaten my friends or family and relationships. I went home that day with my study partner and boyfriend, and they were scared for me. Once I got home, I saw a little red package tied up with a little bow. And of course, this had to be from him. Classic maniac type move, sending packages. I opened the package, and inside were pictures of me and notes about how he was going to hurt people and how he loved my eyes, and so many other things about what he was going to do to me, things that made me physically sick that I actually threw up. I stayed home and called my brother, who was currently working as a police officer, and he advised me to press charges. I did later that month, and thankfully he was suspended. I got a restraining order against him, and for a moment, I finally had peace of mind. Let's start off with some background information. I'm a 19-year-old male living in a semi-large city in Ontario. It was around 11 at night and I had just got done working out at the gym. I went to the grocery store to pick up some food for the next couple of days. Well, at the grocery store I decided to get $120 cash back, money that I owed my mom. And unknown to me, as I left the store, money that I came so close to losing. Instead of going straight home, I decided to go for a little drive. I just got my car not long ago and the novelty of driving stick hadn't worn off yet. After about a half hour of driving around in the city, I decided it's time to head home. As I passed the gas station on the edge of town, but still close to my house, I decided now's a good time as any to pull in and fuel up. I pull in and I notice that I'm the only one at this gas station. I'm in a very industrial business part of town, the edge like I said, so there isn't much around. There's an empty lot without light beside the gas station and I noticed an SUV sitting there. I would say about 100 to 200 meters away, but I don't think much of it. I get out and start pumping gas and that's when I noticed a woman come around the corner and walk straight towards me. As soon as I noticed her, a shiver ran down my spine. I instinctively locked my car. She walked towards me quickly, staring at me pretty intensely the whole time. I got in a fight with my boyfriend and he left me here. Can you give me a ride to my mom's house? She said casually in her raspy smoker voice. Another chill ran down my spine as she repeated the question, almost word for word in that same raspy voice. Um, I have to pump gas first, I said to her keeping my eyes on her the whole time. She then walks around the passenger side door beside me and grabs onto the door handle. 
Can you unlock your car door? I'm cold, and I've been here for a while. I have to pay for gas, I said, deciding to cut the gas pumping short. I walk inside and talk to the guy behind the counter. I told him that the girl outside was kind of suspicious, and I didn't know her. He just kind of shrugged, and I could tell he wasn't interested in getting involved, so I walked out. I figured she was probably high or something, but I would have to find a way to just get her to leave me alone. As I walk out, the SUV that I mentioned earlier started up. I watched the driver maneuver himself so he could just drive out the exit. He then stopped, engine still running. He was still about 100 meters away. Can you open the door now? I'm really cold. So many alarm bells were going off in my head already. First, she just looked sort of sketchy. She was dressed well enough, but her face was pretty rough. She was pretty much covered in makeup, but it didn't hide a nasty looking sore on her lip. Her sunken eyes were dull and bloodshot, and just dead looking. Second, she didn't seem like a damsel in distress. She didn't seem upset, and she spoke without much emotion. No, that's not my problem. I need to go home, I said to her, as firmly as I could. Come on, you're driving me home, right? I can't. I have to get home now. Reaching for my phone, I realize I left it in the car. I'm cold. I've been out here for hours, she shouts pretty angrily for someone who's asking for a favor. Then I notice her glance at the SUV. I begin to speculate what's going on, and raised my voice a bit. That's not my problem. I'm now standing at the driver's side door. I'm freezing. You said you would drive me home. That's not my problem. I started to raise my voice, and she started to raise hers. We weren't yelling, but it was getting heated. We went back and forth like that for a couple of minutes. My mind was racing. I thought about losing my car, about getting stabbed or shot, about getting robbed for the 120 I had in my wallet. Then I just lost it on her. Get the fuck back. You don't know who I am. Get the fuck back right now. I guess I was in fight mode at this point. I was pretty ready just to fucking clock this bitch if she tried anything, as awful as that may sound. I think I caught her off guard or something, because she stepped back right away. You better get out of here right now then, she said, walking backwards. I instantly felt my balls tingle sadly and climb back up inside me after she said that. I was now out of fight mode and into fucking flight mode. I watched her until she got a decent distance away, noticing she was walking sort of towards the SUV. I didn't watch for much longer. I hopped in my car and peeled the fuck out of there. I turned into a random subdivision, making sure I wasn't being followed. I called the cops and they said they would send a car, but there wasn't much they could do because there was no real crime committed. But I did the right thing, and she was most likely bait for some kind of robbery. I then drove home as fast as I could. Sorry if this was a bit wordy, I'm still obsessed with the details of what happened, and that's what's got me so disturbed. The emotionless way she spoke. The creepy way she looked. That SUV. I'm surprised I didn't just burst into fucking tears. I mean, I've been jumped before, but this just seems so crazy and predatory. The last thing she said to me absolutely haunts me. You better get out of here right now then. Laying it all out like that, so suddenly giving up the damsel in distress act, has to be the worst part of this for me. I'm 22 now, but this happened when I was 16. At the time, I lived in Staten Island, New York. For a little background, I'm a female and at the time, I was 120 pounds soaking wet with a height of 5 foot 6. I thought I was invincible. I never imagined anything like this would ever happen to me. It was March 17th of 2013, around 10.30pm, and I was leaving my boyfriend's house. He walked me to the local bus stop as he always did. We joked and laughed while we waited for my bus to show up. Because it was kind of late, there weren't many cars on the street. I happened to notice a black SUV parked across the road. I didn't think much of it at the time. 
My bus eventually came, and I said goodbye to my boyfriend and boarded it. I took a seat next to the bus driver. The rest of the bus was empty. The driver turned to me once we hit the first red light, and he asked me, What are you doing out this late? It was random and a little creepy. I replied with, I was just with my boyfriend. We made small talk, and my initial apprehension was put at ease. The driver then told me that it wasn't exactly safe to be out and about at this hour, and that I should be more careful. I nodded, but as I said before, I was an arrogant 16 year old who thought she was invincible. As my stop approached, I looked at my phone and the time read 11.30 PM, and my phone's battery was down to 5%. Great, I thought to myself. As I exited the bus and said my goodbyes to the driver, he told me to stay safe. I gave him another nod as the door folded back shut. For some reason, I just stood there and watched the bus make its way down the street until the taillights were well out of sight. As I stood there at the empty bus stop, a sensation of what I can only describe as impending doom came over me. The bus that dropped me off near my house was scheduled to arrive at 11.40, only 10 minutes staring off into space, thinking about some things I had to do when I got home. A black SUV pulls up to the bus stop. The uneasy feeling I had earlier intensified, but I did my best to play it cool. A man rolls down the window and asks me, Hey, excuse me, do you know what time the bus is supposed to be here? He appeared to be a mix between Spanish and Asian, medium build. At this point, I did not make the connection that this may have been the same vehicle I just saw before I boarded the first bus. I figured that he was probably waiting for someone, so I replied, it shouldn't be long. He then asked me how long I've been waiting. It was then I started to freak out. This guy was giving me the creeps, but I considered that I might be overreacting just a tad. Perhaps he was just trying to pass the time, but still, I kept my guard up. I answered that I hadn't been waiting long. He then proceeded to try and make more small talk. I was trying to be polite, but I also kept looking at my pitch black phone screen, trying to subtly hint to him that I wasn't interested in the conversation. It was dark out at this point. The only luminescence was coming from some distant streetlights. However, there were also two big trees outside the bus stop that were positioned in such a way that they blocked out most of the light. So, if this guy tried anything, the dark would have provided decent cover. I nervously clenched my phone, the uncomfortable feeling inside increasing with every passing second. He then told me that he was new to the area and didn't know his way around too well. He claimed that he was in the army and was stationed nearby. He then asked where the beach was. It's just down the street. I told him in a very matter of fact way, as if to convey, maybe you should go there so I don't have to look at you anymore. It was then that our eyes had met. I could see his face very clearly. His eyes were not like any normal human beings. It was as if they were looking right through me. Staring at me like a hungry fox who had just discovered a trapped, defenseless rabbit. Then he asked me, Do you mind if you show me around? Come on, get in the car, show me around the area. I may have been a naive 16 year old, but I'm not an idiot. I knew if I got in that car, that would be the last time anyone heard from me. I was trying my best to show him that I wasn't afraid, so I politely declined while looking down the street from my boss. He then began to beg and plead. It was really kind of pathetic. I told him no once again. Then he said something that I'll never forget. Come on baby, it won't take long, I promise. My blood ran cold, and my stomach felt like it was going to drop right out of my ass. I felt absolutely sick, like I was going to throw up. But I kept my cool, and thankfully my bus was now in sight, coming down the street, and a feeling of relief washing over me. I told him no, once again, thinking that was the end of it. He then told me he'd drive me home right afterwards. This guy would not give up. I had finally had enough. With all the strength and courage in me, I shouted, No! Leave me the hell alone, you fucking loser! As my bus pulled up, I heard him say something genuinely terrifying, and I quote, Fine bitch, I'll just follow you and see where you live. My heart started to race, my hands broke out in a cold sweat, and my body began to tremble with fear. 
I quickly got on the bus, and honestly, I don't know why I didn't tell the bus driver what was going on. I think I was just in a state of shock. I was hoping that Mr. Jailbait Hunter in the SUV didn't mean what he said and that he was just pissed off and trying to scare me. When I sat down, I looked out the window. I saw headlights of the SUV tailing the bus. I thought I was going to have a mental breakdown. When the bus arrived at my stop, I ran like hell. I reached the front door to my house. It was usually unlocked, but tonight of all nights, it was locked from top to bottom. I frantically rang the doorbell while going through my bag to find my keys. Then, I heard someone pull up out front. Without turning around, I knew who it was. Just like in the movies, I dropped the keys as I was trying to put them in the front door. But somehow, I finally managed to unlock the door. Before turning the handle, I heard a car door slam shut from behind me. I quickly ran inside and locked the door. In a panic, I explained to my mother and my older brother what had happened. My brother ran outside and looked up and down the street. I was shaking, absolutely consumed by terror. My emotions finally got the best of me, and I could no longer hold back my tears. We called the police, and they came and searched the area. They asked me if I had gotten a tag number, and unfortunately, I had to tell the officer that it was too dark to see. But I did notice a sticker of some sort of a bird on the backseat driver's side window. It didn't dawn on me until they left that this had been the same SUV that was across the street when I was with my boyfriend an hour prior. They told me they checked the army base nearby and around the area, but no one had seen any vehicle matching the description I gave. All I could think about was what the bus driver had said to me and the irony of what took place that same night. Years went by and I didn't think much about this incident after that night. One day, I was scrolling through Facebook and see a picture that my friend had posted. It was a story of a man who had been following her home from work for the past three days. It was the same guy who I encountered five years prior. My heart felt like it was going to leap out of my throat. Looking at the post, I noticed that several other women had come forward, and they all shared similar experiences to mine. I ended up finding out that he almost kidnapped a 13-year-old girl. She allowed herself to be lured into his car, but once inside, she noticed a roll of duct tape, some rope, a pair of gloves, and a bottle of what turned out to be chloroform on the floorboard. She ended up jumping out of the window while they were stopped at a red light. I don't know all the details, but apparently, he got physical with another woman, who was pregnant, trying to force her into his car. He got ballsy and started trying to abduct these women in broad daylight. The news found out that his name was Leo, and also discovered that he had a wife and two daughters, who were around three and five. They interviewed his neighbors. To my surprise, they defended him saying that all these women were lying. It's truly unbelievable just how stupid some people are. Five separate accounts from five different women, who have no connection with each other, have come forward and shared their experiences. Could you please dislodge your head from your ass and face up to the facts? Anyway, to this day, I have no idea what became of him, but the last thing I heard, he was still at large. I hope they caught him, so no other young woman have to be subjected to this monster ever again.